Great. Well, it's just me this week. You guys are so used to me bringing somebody on, you know, just a little train of thought with me bringing so many people onto these calls. I mean, some people are a little leery of like, well, Jamie, if you bring all these different trains of thought onto these calls, it can be confusing to some of the new people. And I don't know if any of you would find like, well, gee, I hear this message from this owner, then I hear that message from that owner, and man, I'm a little confused. I remember as a as a newer owner, I kind of brought that up to Paul Goudreau. I said, hey, there's so many trains of thought. I feel like I'm a student you know, learning karate, but there's so many different karate schools. He says, well, you need to go to the best school. I said, well, you run the best school. He says, exactly. I'm like, does that mean I can go to your school? He says, I've been waiting for you to ask. And so I went to the school of Paul Goudreau to learn really how to run an ICL. Um, but I just, listen, I give you guys credit where I think you guys are all critical thinkers and you know how to think for yourself and you have a brain. So I don't, feel the need to shelter you guys with just one train of thought here. I like bringing all these superstars on. And when I have curiosity, like I met um, Cooper for the first time on that Zoom call with you guys, I'm just curious based on his performance. I mean, the guy is so good. I mean, you're getting $65,000 wires and you joined the business in 2019. You got something to teach me. So I hope you guys like that I keep bringing all these different trains of thought to the table. And as you guys get your hamsters running and you get some ideas, feel free to vet them out with your promoting owner, people like me, and you know I'm real happy to do that. Um, I have several thoughts. I mean, I've got lots of different things I'd love to, uh, to run past you guys. In this particular call, I wanted to run through core planning, weekly core planning. And so I want to make this as interactive as, as I can. I mean, I don't want to just monologue here for 30 minutes. I want to, I want your feedback, but I want to start with this thought. Okay. Is there a difference between planning and preparing? Or when you do your weekly planning, is that also preparing for you? So I think most people would be shocked or surprised to hear, because I think most people say, oh, Jamie, you know, you're a C-type personality. So you're planning, you're weekly planning, man, you must probably spend two hours, you know, planning because you're one of those C-brains, you know, complicated. That's what the C stands for in the C-type or conscientious, one of the two, maybe both. I said, well, it takes me around 15 to 20 minutes. It only takes you 15 to 20 minutes to plan your week. Well, yeah, planning is just figuring out the right things to do. I mean, I, I like that motto of, you know, managers do things right and leaders do the right things. So I just, you know, my calendar, I just I plant the big rocks. I want to do the most important things throughout the week and, you know, put my schedule together. But yeah, that only takes 15 to 20 minutes. It's the preparing that takes so long. And I'm looking at Brandon Falkerson's little square here. I know that, I know that, how he rolls. I mean, I've watched his preparation and action on a daily basis. Preparing isn't 10 minutes. Preparing takes time. So I just, I don't, I want to start off saying, listen, I don't want people to confuse those two tasks. To me, those are very different. Taking time to plan is one muscle and taking time to prepare, prepare your meetings, prepare your content, do your research, survey, however you want to prepare, read books, listen to podcasts, watch videos, you know, you can certainly plan time to prepare, but I want to start off saying, hey, listen, those are two different tasks. So find the time to prepare. This particular topic here today is, again, planning. And like I said, I only spend 15 to 20 minutes a week planning. And that maybe comes as a shock to some of you. And maybe that's motivating to some of you guys that are eyes that I don't want to spend two hours planning. Great. Neither do I. I spend 15 to 20 minutes. Any dialogue on that before I move on? Like, huh, planning is a, it's short. It's like a sprint. Preparing is a marathon. John Wooden, Wizard of Westwood. His, you know, I studied him a lot, you know, growing up in the business. Uh, for every 
um, for every one hour of practice would be two hours of preparation for John Wooden. And his practices were so money that by the time it was game time, the players would come off the court and they'd be like, coach, it's actually easier than what we practiced. Like the games were actually easier than the practices. If you want a modern day uh, example, you guys all remember the pick um, uh, New England Patriots versus um, Atlanta, that comeback, 28 to three comeback. If you get a chance, I should show you the video of they prepared, Belichick is such a freak when it comes to preparation. Um, they prepared that play uh, and you can see, I think it's like 15 minutes, whatever. They practiced this, and uh, I think it was Butler's the guy that got the pick. When when Belichick called it out, he's looking at Pete Carroll across the field, and he says, goal line, goal line. Like, he called the play, and they executed that play perfectly to get the pick and win the Super Bowl. So, again, I, I'm a big fan of preparation. I just don't want to confuse planning and preparing. Stephen Reif, you had a question. Uh, what do you? Where do you want to go? Yeah, just to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. You use planning as like the framework, and then you prep around that. Is that kind of the direction you're going in? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Right. So it's like okay. So the planning part. Hey, Jamie's going to run four to five morning meetings next week. Well, how long does it take me to put that in my calendar? Like, well, that's easy. Well, now preparing for the content. Well, that's not a minute long task that requires thought that requires, you know, slowing down and thinking. Okay. So planning. So I always used to do my planning on my own, my office planning. I own it. I'm the ICL owner. I'm going to plan the week. And most people, they, they, they sit down with their calendar, whether it's digital or paper. I don't think, you know, whatever suits your fancy. I don't think there's a right or wrong. Um, and you sit down and you plan your week. And so the challenge I had, and I remember just kind of bouncing this off Gary. Listen, I could run a high performing office. Okay. I once I figured out the business, man, I could run a high-performing ICL. My challenge was I can't reproduce a high-performing ICL. I'm number one in the country on my campaign, but then I spit out an owner, and then the owner's suffering. Well, I don't want to do that. I want my owners to win. I want my owners to be really good. And so Gary kind of threw it out there. He says, well, if you really want to develop your owners, Jamie, like, why don't you plan the week? Why don't you treat them like uh, your core leaders, at least? Not all your leaders, your core leaders. Why don't you treat them like a board of directors? And together, you guys plan the week. And at first, that thought kind of made the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Like, well, no, it's, it's my business. I'm the ICL owner. But I'm like, yeah, but I'm struggling and promoting outside deals. So maybe I got to keep an open mind to this. And I'll say this, there, there's three big um, values I have found in core planning rather than individual planning. Uh, one is, it is a great tool to develop your key people, that they're part of the decision-making of the business. They feel empowered, you know, that, you know, they're, they're making decisions for the company. It's not just you dictating what's going on in the company. It's a board of directors that are moving this ship. So I found value in developing leaders to become owners and become good owners at that. Number two, and this isn't the reason to do it, but this is a byproduct of it. It's less work for me. I'm sharing the workload. And number three is the guys always came to the table with better ideas than the ones that I had. It, it just support that old saying of none of us is smarter than all of us. Like you as the owner, you're not smarter than the collective group. You're not, you're part of the collective group. So it's your brain plus the other brain. So the name of, of this game here is get all the brains in the game. Okay. That's weekly core planning. Get the brains in the game. 
So I'm going to share some docs with you guys. And at any point in time, just feel free to interrupt. And, you know, I'm, I'm giving you some, some tactical info here. And if it's too much, just stop me. I can do that sometimes. But um, I'm just going to share with you guys. Share screen. Getting the brains in the game. You can see that doc. I want to start off. This is a, this is a pre-COVID schedule that I had. My 2019 office schedule. All right. And I'm sharing this because I think a lot of people used to do this and then COVID somewhat sidelined many owners that because we got into this remote world, um, maybe we weren't doing the core planning the way we used to. But when I look at my old schedule, right, my 2019 good old quill schedule there, the piece I want to show you here is, okay, my Friday piece, Friday was always when I did my core meeting of the minds, right? I had so. Here's the normal times everybody come in, my practice pitching campaign, field time, yada, yada, yada. But Friday was always a little bit different. We'd start early and we'd end early on Fridays. That just accommodates the B2B world that I was obviously, you know, living in. But, you know, I put this on the wall. Everybody knew their schedule. Everybody knew the starting time. Everybody knew that this is the, the core meeting here. This is the time that this all happens. And then after the core meeting, we would get into the, we'd call it the speaker of the house, right? So when it came down to, now we have the agenda, we've got the schedule, and now we would involve the whole office and let the whole office know, you know, what we're doing this next up and coming week. That's what we call the speaker of the house. They'd make the announcement. And then everybody would have 10 minutes to plan their one-on-ones, plan their up and coming week after we, the core leaders, plan the week. Okay. When this call is done, if any of you want me to forward this to you, I'm happy to forward it to you. Then the core doc, right? So all the core leaders, I started off, and, and listen, this, this, you can custom tailor this however you want. First, we wanted to identify who were core leaders. And we just said, listen, leaders with two or more first-generation leaders on their team, okay? They would have to fill out this document when they came into core planning in advance. Nobody comes in spitballing, not putting any thoughts together. You got to come to the table already putting your thoughts together. Okay, so I asked everybody, myself included, come into the meeting with this filled out. If you had the magic wand and you're the dictator, this is what you have. So everybody's coming to the table with some thoughts. And I just broke it up into several categories, like, okay, relationship building, team night, uh, this week's events, up and coming office events. We put lots of time around this stuff. And again, when I said, you know, the ideas that everybody came up with were always better than mine. This is kind of what I'm referencing. People would always come up with, hey, Jamie, it's October. We should all do a, we should do a haunted house together for a team night. I'm like, gee, that's a great idea. I just wanted to go to a restaurant, eat some chicken wings and beer. How boring am I? How smart are you? Right? So you're going to get some smart ideas. Then the logistical strategy, who's running the morning meetings, who decides who interviews, opportunity meetings, final interviews, and then core focus, right? Who's running the campaign? What's the weekly theme? What are the competitions? Who are running the clinics? And then again, this stuff doesn't take long to, to put a name and what the theme should be. But then after this meeting is done, over the weekend, that's when people need to prepare. So as I'm preparing for my portions, well, the guy that's running the leader's clinic, well, that person's going to prepare for their portion. All the preparation is going to ha happen after all the planning. And my last doc I just want to share with you guys, right? So after the core meeting, we all get together, speaker of the house, everybody whips out a fresh goal sheet you custom tailor your goal sheet to you know fit your needs got i you know obviously i stole this from stephen covey sharpen the saw you know how are you sharpening the saw your personal performance your daily tracker your your team growth what you should focus on so i would hope that you guys all have a current version of a goal sheet that you guys use again i'm happy to share this with you and you can Remove the things you don't like from mine. You can simplify it. You can make it more complicated, whatever you want. But those were the tools that I wanted to share with you guys when it came to core planning. 
So again, in B2B world, it's Monday through Friday. Friday, you know, we're, we're ending a week. That's a great time to start planning the next week. If I was on retail, I, I don't know what I'd do on retail, but you guys figure it out. You guys are all critical thinkers. You'll, you'll do what's right for you. But before the week starts, you got to do the planning. You can't plan for the week in the midst of, you know, in the midst of it. You got to plan before. So just keep that in mind. But those are my tools, the core planning document, the schedule on the wall, and then a nice fresh goal sheet for everybody. So now it's time to make this interactive thoughts, questions. My pitch is that you guys get all the brains in the game. That's really the purpose of this call. Don't do your weekly planning on your own. You're not smarter than your collective group of core leaders. Hey, Jamie, do you prepare for that meeting or you just go to that meeting? Well, the preparation I have is I fill out the core uh, document myself with my thoughts. And I have to be careful. I was just talking to, I was talking to Grant and Gary about this either last week or the week before. I said, I always have to kind of bite my tongue because I don't want to be a bully in that meeting and like, okay, well, listen, I'm the owner. So here's, so usually I'll be the last to share my thoughts. Um, but my preparation is filling out that core doc, treating myself like I'm just one of the board members, right? If there's, if there's only four of us in that meeting, well, I'm only 25% of the voice. So, so I want to be treated the same way I want to treat people coming into that meeting. And I've moved the needle. None of you asked this question, but well, Jamie, you got two first generation leaders. Listen, it's all supply and demand. If I don't have a very big office, I might just change it to as long as you've got one first generation leader on your team. So again, that, that core document is a living, breathing document. It can change. You don't have to stay rigid with it. Like, no, we've always got, you always have to have two first gen leaders. I have reduced it to one. And then as the office has swelled, I up the ante to two. I've never had core leaders larger than two though. Like two uh, first gen leaders. I mean, you're halfway to a system management with two first gen leaders on your team. So dude, I want your voice. I want your brain. Come into that meeting. You're a board member. You're an architect. I mean. How do you want this business to look? You should have a say if you've got two people on your team that are leaders. Jeannie, is there a certain size where it becomes ineffective and that's why you're increasing the standards? Like once there's yeah. like 15 people in the room, there's just kind of too many people. So it's hard to get like meaningful exactly. conversations. What, what was that number for you where it started to seem like there was, it would lose a bit of the effectiveness. You got to increase those standards. Well, again, you think about it like core, right? You want the core I mean, the core should be somewhere between 10 to 20% of the office. So if there's, if there's, let's say, 12 people, you know, maybe three of us are in that meeting, me plus two people, that seems to be the right number. I mean, if there's 12 people, there shouldn't be seven people in that meeting. It's just too big. So I've always looked at like, it's usually 10 to 20% of the total office, that would be your core. Think maybe of even the 80-20 rule, right? You put 80% of your time into 20% of your people. That might be a good way to look at that. But if there, let's just say to your point, Jeff, if 15 people were in that meeting, let's say you have a hundred reps in your office, which nobody does. But if you had a hundred, well, you'd have like 15 people in that room. You don't have enough time to get to everybody's voice and everybody's input. There just, there isn't enough time. Which was my next question. So is, is the whole office doing the goal sheets? Yes. Or is it just specifically for your core leaders? No, the core leaders do the core planning. But then again, when it comes time, let me go back to share screen here again. And then was each person sharing like publicly their goal sheets or are they just sending that to you? No, no, they don't even send it to me. They do it for themselves, right? It's only 10 minutes in this weekly planning here. So again, core happened. We've got the crew meetings going on, leaders meeting, whatever. Then we get to the speaker of the house. Everybody's got 10 minutes. Really all that, it, all that they're doing uh, in those 10 minutes is, hey, Jeff, uh, can I get a one-on-one -on -one with you next week? Oh, sure, Jamie. You know, what do you want to talk about? Can we talk about the transition to close? My leader keeps telling me that's the part I'm missing. I don't think that's what I'm missing, but that's what Stephen Reif keeps telling me. Uh, can I get your time? So that's all they're doing. They're just really setting up one-on-ones 
and they're planting in their schedule. Oh, we're going to a haunted house on Wednesday this week. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's just a quick snapshot, just 10 minutes of like planning, planting your big rocks and then on to the next meeting. But the whole office does that planning together after the core planning was done. Okay, but then there's not, they're not like submitting, submitting it to anyone that's just for themselves to do the planning. Yeah, I mean, some owners like people submitting their goals to them, their plans for the week. I mean, I'm not opposed to that if that's what you want to do. Um, so you could certainly implement that. Say, hey, guys, after you're done with the planning, I want everybody to give me a copy. I want to see, you know, what your targets are for the week. I mean, you could totally do that. Again, I'm not saying there's a one size fits all and everybody needs to do it the same way. Um, but I, I, generally speaking, did not ask people to give me their goal sheets for the week after that. Uh, no, I was just thinking for efficiency wise, if you've got 20 people with goal sheets, it's, it's good insight. It can be helpful for planning one-on-ones, but if you're trying to go one by one, that's a lot of time to try to reach out to everybody. So it's kind of, I don't know if you'd have enough time to do that properly. Yeah. I know Gareth has a system. I'm really impressed with his system and I think Gareth is an I, so I, it gives me some encouragement that, Hey, if an I does this, but everybody's filling out like a, they got a tab on a document where they're filling out their weekly goals. And so then when, when Gareth has his one-on-ones, all the information's already loaded in that, uh, I think it's a Google sheet that he's using. And it's like, yeah, it's real smart. It, everything's just transparent with goals and results. And it's a really good tool for him. And obviously, you know, he's having a banging year. Something's working for him in Minneapolis. So he, he'll put a lot of merit behind the transparency of people sharing their goals for sure. Mr. Rugia? Yeah, I was thinking about how I would schedule it and kind of what that might look like compared to the, the Friday that you're describing. And I was wondering, do you just decide a time and then say like, hey, if you want to be a core leader, you'll be here? Or do you try to cater the time to when the most people will come? Um, meaning like, are you catering to get higher attendance? Or is, this, or is the scheduling also a filtering mechanism? Well, no, it's part of the morning atmosphere, right? So instead of people coming in at 7.30, right? That's the normal, everybody's coming in at 7.30 B2B. I just asked the core leaders to show up at seven. So mm -hmm. they're just coming in 30 minutes early for the core planning. And I'd usually bring in, you know, uh, bagels or something, coffee, just, you know, make it fun. Um, but yeah, they're coming in anyway. So I'm not trying to drive attendance, you know, but there's a, there's a qualification. They have to have two first gen leaders on their team, or again, you can lower it to one first generation leader. Right. I was talking to Grant about this. I wouldn't go lower than one. I mean, if the guy's just a salesperson and they're not developing people, well, I don't know if, if I need their input on team development in the office. Right. So they got to have at least a leader on their team to be in. And the most I've ever had is two leaders. Um, but yeah, we just come in 30 minutes early, earlier than normal. Um, so yeah, do it during your, it's part of your morning atmosphere. Gotcha. Like when do you do team nights, Stephen? I uh, usually do a Monday night. You do a Monday night. So then. Yeah. If we're, we're working Thursday to Monday is the, the block there. Yeah. So then I'd probably do the weekly planning then. Uh, you guys are in the office every day, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Um, I don't know. Maybe do your, your core planning on Friday, kind of like what we did. Then you're planning for what's coming up on Monday. Sometimes you need more time though. Like I found again, events coming up, you know, some things require booking and paying for things and you can't just do it like three days before like you got to like right in that haunted house example i'm giving you you got to do that way in advance so um yeah so again just pick your time but it's part of your like don't do it on your off days is what i'm saying don't do it on tuesday right. or wednesday it's got to be on thursday friday saturday sunday or monday yeah what was the reason for doing it? Because B2B Friday is kind of the end of the week. So what was the reason for end of the week versus like the Monday start of the week? Well, because the, the gun has already gone off on Monday. It's too late start to plan when you're... When have you're, the plan already. 
Hey, done. You're, you're, the the race has already started, so you're not going to plan the marathon at the one mile marker. You got to plan before you run the race. Yeah, Monday's too late to plan. Again, campaign. So if it's done really well, again, as you guys do all this stuff, really, you know, your morning meetings, your campaign meetings, the leadership meetings, I mean, everything's all kind of blended together. Like there could be a theme running for the whole week with every meeting that the new people are a part of. So I like doing that. I like even like morning meetings that bleed into each other. Right. So an easy example would be seven habits, highly effective people. That's seven morning meetings. Be proactive on Monday, begin with the end in mind on Tuesday, put first things first on Wednesday. So, okay, so here's what I'm doing for the meetings. Then the campaign manager is like, oh, okay, I'm going to piggyback off Jamie's meetings. And here's how I'm going to get the campaign going. Like you can really run a, a, a smooth operation. Again, when you get all the brains in the game, you get some really bright ideas and I'm telling you, I've always been shocked, and maybe that's the wrong word, but I've always been shocked or pleasantly surprised just on how how bright like the people are that I work with. Like when I say bright, like just innovative ideas that I just never would have thought of on my own. And I was so thankful that I went into this whole core planning rather than doing it on my own because these guys all made me look smarter than I was. That whole team effort. Question, Jamie. So when you have, let's say, three core leaders and then everybody have their own idea, I want to do this, I want to be to B, I want to do C, who to decide? And the other people like, I don't want to do the other ones. Well, whatever we decide, kind of like, you know, I always tell my wife, like, whoever the president of the United States is, whether you voted for them or not, that's your president. It's part of the system, right? So you, you got to back up your president type of thing. Now, maybe I shouldn't even talk politics type of thing. But hey, we'll have a vote on something. And whatever it's voted, well, then I'm going to run wholeheartedly with it. So let's say I'm like, hey, man, Jeff's idea is a real bad one. But everybody's voting for Jeff. Well, I'm going to walk in and execute next week half-heartedly because I thought it was a stupid idea. No, that's not how I roll. Everybody voted for Jeff's idea. I'm going to be an active participant next week. Let's run with it, Jeff. Let's see how this goes. And everybody just has to buy in wholeheartedly and enthusiastically into the plan, but we'll put it to a vote. I mean, this is how things are done you at Sidcor as well, too. I've been part of plenty of meetings at Sidcor where we're deciding what industries to get into, what campaigns to be a part of. And it's interesting watching a guy like Gary, who should have the loudest voice in the room, but we're all putting little sticky notes on the on the um, initiatives that we're voting for. And then whatever the the vote comes down to, Gary's like, all right, guys, let's do it. Even if that's something he didn't vote for, he gets he gets behind the idea because he respects the brains in the game. If a person's got two leaders on their team and they're a part of this meeting, I respect your opinion. And, and there's something I'm not seeing. If, I'm, if I really think it's a bad idea, there's something I'm not seeing, but let's run with it. And again, a lot of times I've just been shocked with, with some of the, the brilliant ideas that I've seen. Little things like maybe, maybe you, the owner, maybe, you're, maybe you have a blind spot. I'll just give you an example. Maybe you have a blind spot and you're a little stressed in your meetings because maybe sales are low, money's tight, whatever it may be. And in the core planning, they're like, hey, listen, Alice, we just want to, we want to keep things light. We want to keep it fun. So we want to do all these fun games. And you're thinking, well, we don't need games, man. You guys need like sales training. We got to execute. And you're outvoted. And you're like, all right, I guess next week we're just playing childish elementary games. So be it. And then you, again, you'll be surprised to see, oh, well, look at production lift. Like maybe they're onto something. Maybe they saw something that I couldn't see because I've got a blind spot. So then there's the value of the board of directors rather than you, the dictator, you know, running the show. All right, Stephen Reif, and we'll make this last question. I went over for 30 minutes, but I certainly like the interaction. Yeah, actually, to, to follow up with Alice's question. So when you, you're sorting through that conflict, you're hearing people out, you're going with it if you're outvoted. That said, does every core 
leader have the same vote? Like, do you give the qualified assistant manager with 10 people, you know, the same voting power as the guy with two? Yeah, just, just like the U.S., the guy who's a billionaire has the same merit as the homeless guy who's registered to vote. It's just it's a one-to-one. -one. Your vote isn't stronger because you're a billionaire paying more in tax. No, nope, everybody's got an equal vote. So again, being in those meetings at Sidcor, Gary has the same weighted vote as a schlep like me. I mean, there's no way. Gary's vote should count way more than mine. But that's not how he runs it. He he trusts the brains in the game. Okay, let's run with that. I mean, the solar initiative that I did, that's how that process went. Uh, Gary wasn't with wasn't for it, but I was for it, a couple other people for it. And by the time we vetted this whole thing out, he's like, All right, Jamie, let's run with it. Let's do it. Best of luck to you. And I'm like, no, he's behind it. He's behind it because the collective group was behind it. So yeah, the assistant manager has no higher, stronger voting power than the new core leader who's in his or her first meeting. It's the same vote. All right, so again, if you guys want those docs, just fire off a text or an email, I'll send them to you. You can custom tailor it to fit your ICL and your schedule, obviously. But but again, I'm, I'm a big fan of this. Again, what you'll see, the benefit of this is you'll run a better office and you will promote good quality owners through this process too, because everybody starts thinking the same way after a while. They start thinking of how do you get all the best and brightest brains in the game? I think there's big value in that. So always great to see you guys. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys in NatCon and a few of you Canadians. I'll see you guys in Toronto in a couple of weeks. So looking forward to that. See you guys.